So the next thing I'd like to talk about is inductive and deductive reasoning. These are fundamental ideas that are essential for understanding the nature of statistics and, and what it can do and what it can't do, and, and more importantly, why the subject of statistics is actually fundamentally necessary to scientific endeavors such as biology, chemistry, physics. Now I will also say market research. Marketing is a scientific endeavor. It is a type of science. Psychology is a, is a type of science. Um, and I'll go more into that, but let's start with something really simple. Can a drug cure cancer? Many if not most scientific endeavors involve experimenting or observing a small collection of objects called a sample. We might, for example, be interested in whether injecting a particular chemical, which we'll call a drug, can reduce the size of cancerous tumors in rats. So what does the scientist do? They use a different chemical to cause the cancer in a sample of rats and then they inject. Oh, this is something that I, I surprises some of my students. You know, there are no rat catchers like in, in the New York City subway system that go around, you know, searching for cancerous rats and they go, hey, John, look, I got a good one. I got a cancerous rat. OK, we'll use this. We'll give this to the scientists. Come on, that would be ridiculous. So so we give the rats cancer and, and our scientists know how to give cancer to rats really efficiently. We're very good at giving cancers to rats. Just, you know, as a little aside to let you know. So what does the scientist do? They use a different chemical to cause the cancer in a sample of rats and then they inject the drug on, say, half of the sample, and for the other half they might inject saline, which should really do nothing at all. Now, just so that you know, saline is a salt water solution that has roughly the same concentration um, of solutes in it as the blood. So it shouldn't really have any effect on living matter in small doses. A drug by its very definition is a chemical that has some effect on living matter. And there are other ways to give cancer to rats besides just drugs. We could use radiation or, you know, gases or things like that. Uh, but I don't want to put too much, too much into this. Now, there's also this concept of variability, which I mentioned in my very beginning lecture. And that's something we're going to talk about in great detail. I mentioned the standard deviation is a statistic um, which measures variability in samples. And it's also something called a parameter, which is the measure of variability in, in a population from which a sample could be drawn. We'll talk about that a lot. For now, a simple way to really conceptualize the idea of variability is to replace it with the term noise. 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 Like you're taking a measurement and there's some noise. There's variability, you know? And just think of variability right now as noise in the signal, you know? <laughs> noise, right? All right. So inductive reasoning is when we reason from the specific to the general. For example, we study, say, a hundred rats, and then we do something to these rats. Maybe we do something to 50 of the rats and we do something else to the other 50, and then we see if there's a statistically significant difference. Okay, so we're gonna make a conclusion based upon those hundred rats. And those con that conclusion would be called an inference. Now, if we studied every single rat in the world that ever existed and ever will exist, if that was even possible to do, which of course you know isn't, well, then we wouldn't have to use inductive reasoning. We could use deductive reasoning because we had the entire world's population of rats ever. But that's not possible. So when we study a sample and we draw a conclusion about the population from which the sample was drawn. That is called a statistical inference. Statistical inference. And I want you to listen to this sentence really carefully, so I'll let a better speaker than me speak this. Reasoning from specific to general, 
called inductive reasoning, is inherently flawed due to the possibility of incorrect conclusions. Any kind of an inference uses inductive reasoning and comes with the price of the possibility of an incorrect conclusion. Statistical inference admits this possibility but uses mathematics to quantify the chance of coming to a wrong conclusion. So I, I want to give you a little more insight in that. So let's let's imagine we have our fifty can our hundred cancerous rats. Fifty of them we give a nice new drug that you know a startup biotech company has just developed, and you've invested in this biotech company. So you know if. It was a penny stock. So if this biotech company goes up, you could make a lot of money, right? So we're going to compare this drug against a saline placebo that we inject into the rats. And we're going to see if there's a statistically significant reduction in, say, the number of tumors or the tumor size or, you know, whatever, right? So this inference always has the possibility of being wrong because let's say the rats given the placebo saline injection by chance ended up being the healthier rats. Just by chance, let's just say that happened. Oh my God, we could think that there was really no effect of, of the, the new drug when really in fact this is a good drug because by chance the placebo group was healthier. That's the problem with inductive reasoning when we study samples. We can make these errors simply by the roll of the dice. Now, don't think for a minute that that stopped Homo sapiens from designing scientific methodology because it didn't. I mean, we no longer, you know, live in caves and, you know, we don't have to eat the dead animal remains from, you know, big animals killing it. And, you know, we can live in houses. And, and the fact that our iPhone works is really proof that science works. But we have to understand this, this general idea. So I want to use a quote from what many people consider the father of modern statistics, and it would be fair to call this a seminal quote. Um, the man who I'm quoting is Sir Ronald A. Fisher. He was knighted. Um, for his his work in statistics, he was not the earliest statistician that made a tremendous contribution to statistics, but he was one of the statisticians that really championed certain beliefs that brought statistics into a very modern way of being. So I want to read this one single sentence from a book that he wrote called The Design of Experiments. And I'll read this with great respect. We may at once admit that any inference from the particular to the general must be attended with some degree of uncertainty. But this is not the same as to admit that such inference cannot be absolutely rigorous, for the nature and the degree of the uncertainty may itself be capable of rigorous expression. Now, for somebody beginning their journey into college statistics, this sentence might not really speak to you. This sentence might not find purchase in your consciousness where you go, wow, I completely get what he's saying. But if you've put the work in at the end of the course, this should really resonate in your consciousness and make you think, wow, I get it. So there are certain words that I really want to underscore here. We already know that an inference is a conclusion that we make from the particular, which is the sample, say 100 rats, to the general, which is how rats are in general, you know, must be attended with some degree of uncertainty. That means we can draw the wrong conclusion and make an error. But it says, this is not the same as to admit that such inference cannot be absolutely rigorous. Now the word rigorous 
means that we can put logic, reason, and mathematics to it. And we're going to see that his use of the word rigorous deals with the ability to calculate probabilities of errors. Now it says for the nature, now you won't know this in the beginning of your journey, but I want you to write this down. Nature refers to the type of error that you could make. Write that down. And degree refers to the probability of committing one of these types of errors. And the idea of the rigorous expression means you will learn in Statistics 1, in a real college course, how to calculate the probabilities of these two different types of errors. Now, I said that there were two types of errors, but I didn't say why there were two types of errors. But we're at the very beginning of an hour journey. So just recognize that, you know, I've taught this course for, you know, decades. <laughs> And so I know that there are two types of errors, but you don't know this yet, but I'm leading you along into a certain, a certain path of learning, a learning journey. So this concludes the, the introduction to statistics. This is to sort of till the soil into a place where the seeds of knowledge can grow. And I hope you pay a little attention to the past three these, this video and the two preceding, the two videos preceding, because I do think this can help you really orient your compass in the direction that will help you understand college level statistics. And I do want to emphasize the fact that college level statistics is, is a universe away from high school statistics where you just focus on mean, median, and mode, maybe calculating standard deviation and maybe drawing some histograms by hand. You know, nobody can publish a hand-drawn histogram. You know, they'll, they'll throw it out, you know. Histograms aren't drawn by hand, and this video was made in 2020. It's made on the computer. But reading histograms and interpreting histograms made on the computer, well, that's important. So I want to wish you well. I can be a little long-winded at times. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe. And if there's something about this video that you don't like, shoot me a respectful comment and maybe I can make it a little better. Thank you.